Um, so the the motivation of this study is that we need a um, we need a way to describe systems um, spatial temporal chaotic chaotic system in a large spatial temporal domain. Um, our goal is to find a way to describe the um, make, make predictions to the statistical average in of spatial temporal dynamical systems. So the uh, let's start with some background. So uh, we we know that chaotic dynamical systems well they are very hard to describe precisely, but they can be seen as near visitations to a finite repertoire of uh, periodic orbits. And uh, using periodic orbit theory, if we know the periodic orbits and their likelihood of occurring, we can make predictions to the statistical averages to the chaotic dynamical systems. But this method becomes uh, inefficient for a system in a large uh, spatial domain because the it, it's hard to compute uh, fun of the periodic orbits in such a large domain. But a new path to find the periodic orbits in this kind of system is to tell the space time using periodic orbits with finite uh, spatial and temporal periods in both space and time directions instead of treat the system as a temporal system evolving time uh, in a large spatial domain. So um, right now we don't have a periodic orbit theory to make predictions using the spatial, the small spatial temporal tiles. So our goal is to uh, construct this uh, new method to compute this uh, statistical averages using periodic always in space in, in small spatial temporal region. Um, and uh, to accomplish that, we develop this deterministic lattice field theory. So using this lattice field theory, we can um, we, we will just generate global solutions compatible with the defining equation and the, the stabilities which which are proportional to the likelihood of the recurring are given by the global orbit Jacobian matrices. And the, using those uh, global solutions and their stabilities, we will uh, compute this partition sum. We'll construct the partition function to this field theory and use the partition function to compute the statistical averages. Um, so before we construct this new theory, I will briefly review the periodic orbit theory, which are uh, very efficient in making uh, predictions to the expectation value of observables for a temporal system. Um, basically, the periodic orbit theory can relate the uh, expectation value of observables to the spectra of uh, evolution operators. The simplest application of uh, periodic orbit theory is uh, counting, it is to count pure, periodic orbits. So the topological zeta function of a dynamical system is defined in, in this way where this T is the transition matrix. It's uh, the IJs element gives you the ways uh, to travel from the region J to the region I. And the trace of this matrix is equal to the number of periodic points with uh, with period and a uh, trace of t to the power. So even if you don't have a finite uh, uh, finite partition, you can still use this trace formula to compute the topological zeta function. This is a zeta function because if you rewrite this sum as a sum as contributions from each uh, prime orbit, then you can rewrite this uh, determinant, the spectral determinant as, as the product over all prime orbits. 
and the leading root of uh, this data function gives you the topological entropy of the system. Um, but to use periodic copy theory, we want to uh, also estimate the statistical um, averages. And to do that, we'll replace this uh, transition matrix by Perron for business operator or evolution operator. So Perron for business operator is an operator that, that maps the density distribution one step forward in time. Um, and it has a Dirac delta uh, kernel. Mm, evolution operator is basically a generalized uh, Perron for business operator. It has the same Dirac delta kernel, but multiplied by this uh, e to the power of the integrable observable. This observable is the, uh, um, so, so we want to compute the statistical average of this observable. So we need to add this to the evolution operator. Um, and then you compute the uh, spectrum determinant, we get the, um, eigenvalues of the evolution operator. So again, we compute that using the trace. The trace is only contributed by periodic orbits. And if we find all prime orbits, we can um, compute, uh, compute this spectral determinant. And then using the leading root, we find the leading eigenvalue of the um, evolution operator. And then we can compute the expectation value. And if we replace uh, this, this determinant of uh, one minus mp to the power of r, it's the weight of each individual orbit. And if we approximate this using the expanding eigenvalue of the flow k matrix, um, we can rewrite the, uh, can approximate the spectrum determinant using this dynamic zeta function, which can be again read, written as the product or prime always. Um, in practice, it's uh, generally it's impossible to find all periodic orbits of the system. But uh, uh, using cycle expansion approximation, we can make very good estimation using only the uh, short orbits. The reason is that um, here I will use the dynamic zeta function as an example, but we can also do this with spectrum determinant. So after we expand the dynamic zeta function, we, we find the contribution from orbits and pseudo orbits. And uh, we'll see that um, the longer orbits, longer prime orbits, the contribution from longer prime orbits will nearly cancel out with the pseudo orbits formed by shorter orbits, they will have approximately equal contribution with um, opposite signs. So in practice, what we do is to find all the periodic orbits up to a given lens and then do the truncation. The result is um, as we increase the, the lens of shorter orbits, the, um, this result will converge exponentially. So the um, statistical averages we compute from the dynamical zeta function is dominated by the uh, short periodic orbits, while long orbits only give small corrections. And um, this dynamical zeta function, uh, topological zeta function, spectrum determinant only works for uh, temporal systems. But uh, Lind proposed this uh, zeta function that works for a spatial temporal system. What, what they call, um, well, the, the, the map here is uh, not forward in time, but it's a, it's a group whose action will um, map the system in, uh, well, no, there's no time direction. The system can exist on a lattice, so the this group will translate the, the um, system in any direction, which can be seen as time and space. 
Um, so compare this to the topological zeta function, we see that instead of uh, do the sum over the different period, we know sum over different subgroup of the, the action group G. Um, so here I will, um, I'll use two simplest example, um, cut map and spatial temporal cut. They are the simplest uh, spatial temporal chaotic dynamical systems. And I'll first uh, introduce these two systems. So Arnold cut is a piecewise linear map, um, basically existing in the two dimensional state space and map forward in time by uh, matrix. And then this mod, this module one will make sure that the um, the coordinate, the new coordinate is still in the unit um, unit square state space. Um, this is a um, th this this model can describe a kick the router. So P uh, Q and P can be seen as the angular coordinate and the momentum of the router. And uh, Percival Vivaldi proposed this two configuration representation where we can get rid of this um, momentum P. So only uh, here I replace uh, Q with, uh, with phi. So we can rewrite the onwards cat into this form. And this MT will replace this module one with the integer MT, which uh, map the uh, the coordinate back to the unit uh, unit interval and uh, we can compute the because um, the matrix j here is a constant matrix it's same everywhere it doesn't depend on the position in the state space so we can compute the um, eigenvalue of this matrix and then compute the upload exponent we see that if i is greater or equal to three, the system is chaotic. And using the two configuration representation, we can also write the cut map into a simpler form. And um, similar to this form, we can generalize the cut, cut map here, we call it a temporal cut. We can generalize this to higher dimensions. So, um, this is a two-dimensional spatial temporal cut. Basically, each field value is coupled to all of its nearest neighbors on the two-dimensional lattice. And this, uh, I'm, I'm of J and I. It's a, it's a symbol. The the integer that, um, that keep the field value to the unit interval. Okay. Now I'll. I'll introduce the deterministic lattice field theory. So basically for any, um, any we can discretize the scalar field onto the d-dimensional lattice. And uh, here, for example, for one-dimensional lattice, a field configuration, it's a sequence of field values. And for any field configuration, the, um, they, they occurs with, uh, occur with the probability density given by this formula. So, um, yeah, so this Z is a, uh, it's a factor that normalizes the density distribution. Well, S is the action that defines the theory. So the partition function, um, th this factor creates, yeah. So this factor Z here, is, it's a partition function with, uh, um, with source being zero. And generally the partition function can be written in this form. So it's, a, it's an integral over all possible uh, lattice field configurations. And the J is the external source. So using that, we can compute the um, ex expectation value of field values. And this is uh, for, for deterministic field theory, this uh, density distribution will uh, concentrate on the, uh, the, the, the actual orbits. So, um, 
so the, the the solutions are given by the variation of set of one condition so um let's see the yeah so the probability density is non-zero only when the um when the the action is at its maximum uh ex extreme and the, we use this relation to define the um Euler Lagrange, Euler Lagrange equation. Okay. Um, so to um, uh, so the the lattice co field configuration that satisfy this Euler Lagrange equation are referred to as the uh, lattice states. And the probability mm -hmm. of each lattice state is given by um, given by the den probability density is given by the delta function multiplied by the normalization factor. And uh, now for the deterministic system, the partition function can be written as a integral over the um, all possible lattice field configuration times the density distribution. Which is the sum over the contribution from all lattice states, and here the um, this j, it's a, it's a it's a it's a derivative of the Euler-Lagrange equation f, which is also the second order derivative of the action, and we'll call this the orbit Jacobian matrix. Uh, so. We can write the Euler Lagrange equation of a uh, one and two dimensional spatial temporal cat um, using the, this box, the uh, discrete Laplacian operator. So these are the Euler Lagrange equation. Um, okay, so um, here in this formula, we see that the, the Contribution from each prime uh, from each orbit is given given by a Jacobian matrix, and we want to estimate the stability uh, this contribution, and uh, they are the stability of the orbit. So here I will first introduce the forward in time stability. So for a d-dimensional map. For, for a d-dimensional map uh, defined in this way, um, the small deviation of the field value satisfies this linear equation. So, and using this, we can get a forward in time Jacobian matrix, which is the Jacobian matrix of the, the map. Um, and if, uh, if this field value belongs to a period unlighted state, we can compute the flow k matrix of the lattice state using the the chain rule. And, um, so this this is the flow k matrix of the lattice state. Um, but for orbit Jacobian matrix, so for period n lattice state, the orbit Jacobian matrix is given by the derivative of the Euler Lagrange equation, and uh, we can show that uh, the orbit Jacobian matrix computed on the um, lattice state, the light, yeah, computed on the lattice state, are related to the forward in time flow matrix by the Hughes formula. This Hughes formula, it's uh, um, it's proposed for uh, Lagrangian system, but here we will show that it works for, it also works for this, uh, dissipative systems. So to prove the Hughes formula, um, here we'll use the prompt business operator. Um, so we know that when the trace of the prompt business operator only are, um, the, the choice of transformance operator is only contributed by the uh, periodic periodic orbits. 
periodic ladder steps. Mm. And um, to compute the contribution here, we'll integrate the, here we'll only integrate over the infinitesimal open neighborhood around a periodic point, which is the initial point of the ladder state. And um, because this is a, a direct delta function, we see that the result is one over determinant of uh, one minus uh, the orbit Jacobian matrix. Okay, but alternatively, be, be, uh, because the parameter famous operator has the uh, semi group property, so we can also um, compute the trace uh, along the entire lighter state and integrate that in the n dimensional, uh, n d dimensional space, actually. Mm. So the the trace of graph means operator can also be computed in this way. And uh, if we restrict the um, integration to the open neighborhood of a lattice state, the contribution it's a um, one over determinant of orbit copy matrix. Because notice that this product over uh, Dirac delta function. It's just Dirac delta function of the Euler Lagrange equation. And compare this result with the result we found from the forward in time, um, forward in time integration. We see that uh, we have proved the Kills formula. And now uh, I'll show the how to. Uh, I'll show a way to visualize the uh, orbit Jacobian matrix. So for piecewise linear, uh, piecewise linear system like the temporal cat and spatial temporal cat, we can use the determinant of uh, orbit Jacobian matrix. Here we refer to them as a field determinant. We can use that to count the number of uh, uh, periodic, uh, periodic orbits, yes or life states. Because um, notice that the, the system here, for example, the temporal cat, the system has uniform stretching everywhere. So the orbit Jacobian matrix only depends on the uh, period of the lighter state. And um, the orbit Jacobian matrix has a uh, very simple uh, tree diagonal form. It's a circular matrix. And if we write that explicitly, it looks like this. So the determinant of this matrix can be easily computed using the um, Fourier transform. But um, alternatively, we can use the uh, Hughes formula to compute this with the forward in time Jacobian matrix. Mm. We will show this result in the for the, for the uh, two, two and three cycle of uh, temporal cat. So here, um, these figures are um, lattice two, uh, less two and less three lattice states of uh, i equal to three temporal cat. So the um, this unit square and the unit cube here are the state space of the um, lattice, lattice, uh, lattice field configuration of a uh, temporal CAD. And they're stretched, according to this formula, they're stretched by the orbit Jacobian matrix. So for lens two um, lattice state, the, um, this state space is stretched into this fundamental uh, parallelogram. And the um, whenever a point is mapped to an integer, integer point on this lattice, it will be mapped back to the uh, origin by the uh, by the symbol string i. So to count the number of uh, periodic lattice states, we only need to count the number of integer points in this region, which is half open. So actually, we only need to know the area of this. Uh, fundamental parallelogram. So it's given by the determinant of uh, orbit Jacobian matrix. 
for three dimension uh for this three lattice state this state space is stretching to a fundamental uh parallel parallel pipeline and again we'll count the number of integer points in this region which is given by the area uh the, the volume of, of, of this uh parallel pipeline and this result is in agreement with um uh, uh, no, the, the known counting formula. And for two-dimensional, for, for two-dimensional letters, um, the, this problem becomes a bit more complicated because the periodicity of a spatial temporal lattice state is given by a Broadway lattice instead of just a period in time or a period in space. Um, if the so the lattice state is in it's periodic if it's invariant under the translation that belong to a lattice here the Broadway lattice is um, um it's it's given by a set of basis vectors uh, so this, this is a d-dimensional lattice so generally this this is a general Broadway lattice and uh, this is the condition need to be satisfied for a periodic lattice state for two-dimensional spatial temporal lattice, the Broadway lattice is spanned by two primitive vectors. Here we call A1 and A2. For a given lattice, they are more unique, but uh, there is a unique permit normal form, which can be written like this. So L and T are positive integers. I say it's an integer that's uh, greater or equal to zero or less than L. And then we'll label this Broadway lattice by um, L times T subscript I. This is an example of the uh, Broadway lattice spanned by three, three times two subscript one. So there are two uh, primitive vectors. One is in the, um, it's actually not the spatial direction, but we understand this as spatial, uh, spatial directions, temporal direction. So basically when I is equal to zero, uh, when I say it's not equal to zero, this can be seen, um, lattice, lattice state satisfy this periodicity can be seen as a relative periodic orbits for a temporal system. <coughs> okay, so again, to compute the, to count the number of periodic lattice states satisfy the given uh, periodicity, we still compute the determinant of the orbit Jacobian matrix, which is same for all lattice states with given periodicity. It's formed by the identity, uh, identity matrix uh, uh, plus some translation operator in both space and time direction. Uh, but we also need to set up uh, to fix the periodic boundary condition such that um, this periodicity is satisfied. So to compute the determinant, we'll just use discrete Fourier transform. And this is a result, which is in agreement with our computation. It's a product over all uh, eigenvalues of the, this operator. Okay, so, um, so knowing the, this is an example of using the top the topological zeta functions and the, uh, to test the counting. So um, here we can just substitute the, uh, the counting formula of temporal cat to the, uh, to the formula of topological zeta function. And it has a very simple uh, form. And if we expand this, we can uh, again see the, the, the this is a generating function of number of uh, lattice states. Yeah, so we just need to compute the derivative uh, of the uh, let's see, this uh, derivative of the logarithm of the theta function, and each coefficient here is the number of lattice states. Um, and we can also compute this 
Um, okay, so Kim, Lee, and Park generalized the Linz data function to systems with uh, all kinds of symmetries. Because Lin, when Lin proposed that data function had only considered the spatial and temporal translation symmetry, but Kim also applied time reversal symmetry to the data function, and it showed that for a, for a temporal system with time reversal symmetry, which they call uh, flip, flip systems, the data function can be written in this form. So it has a contribution from periodic letter states and the contribution from, and they also showed that uh, um, this data function has a, has a product formula with contribution from each one of the prime of it. So this is indeed a data function. Um, we were able to test this data function using our computation. So one advantage of uh, using uh, global orbit Jacobian matrix to count pure orbits instead of the forwarding time Jacobian matrix is that we can apply the time reversal symmetry to the system to get a symmetry reduced of the Jacobian matrix, which also give us the correct uh, number of lattice states. In, in this case, there are number of lattice states um, with time reversal symmetry. So um, the, the result is in agreement with the, um, with the product of the prime orbits. Okay, now future. Um, so, Right now, we have showed the uh, periodic orbit theory in uh, for temporal system, and uh, there's a Linz data function for a spatial temporal system. But we see that this Linz data function cannot be uh, used to. It, it can be used to compute the topological entropy of a spatial temporal system, but we cannot apply the cycle expansion approximation because always and pseudo always are not nearly canceled after the expansion. And uh, this data function is not a spectrum determinant of the evolution operator. So it's not clear that we can compute the uh, statistical property using the generalized Linz data function with the weight and um, observ um, integrable observable the always. So right now we're trying to construct a zeta fun a, a partition function of the spatial temporal system to make the predictions to the um, statistical averages. So we will first um, set, set a fixed spatial and temporal period, compute the zeta function, and then compute the um, observables, and then extend the spatial and temporal period. So at, at the large spatial and temporal period limit, we should be able to get the correct uh, um, predictions to the uh, system in large spatial temporal region. Um, another, another thing, we, another, another goal is to using the uh, symmetric, symmetric orbits, building blocks, of the system. So we want to build a um, long uh, periodic orbit or, yeah, we want to build long periodic orbit using the um, small orbits with symmetry, both the translation symmetry and reversal symmetry. And we want to use this symmetry to simplify the computation. So right now we have this uh, data function proposed by, uh, Kim and colleagues, but this data function cannot be used. This, this, this data function can only be used to count the number of uh, invariant solutions. We cannot use that to make predictions. So we still want to uh, uh, make use of this uh, time reversal symmetry and possibly other symmetry in the space-time. 
This is the last page. Okay, so the conclusion is that uh, um, to, to make uh, predictions of the um, statistical averages of the system, we only need to gen first generate the periodic solution, periodic orbits systematically, and then compute their uh, stabilities, or which, which is proportional to the likelihood of their occurring. And we know how to do that. We can um, find the solutions using uh, Newton's method, uh, iteration method, and we can compute the stabilities using the global orbit Jacobian matrix. So what we still need to do is to find a way to use those informations to make correct predictions to, to the spatial temporal systems. 